Today, my mom had a genius idea to surprise me with a chore list. Vacuuming, gardening, and the worst, taking out the trash. Honestly, I would rather die. Hi, I'm Harrison, and today I'm going to die. <gasps> sort of. For most of the world, we see death as a scary thing. And I can't lie, I'm in the exact same boat. All my life, I've linked death with sadness because I've just never known different. But the more I think about death, the more curious I am to understand it. So after some research, I found out that people have been brought back to life from the dead. And those who came back to life all said something in common. They claimed death was peaceful and nothing to fear. This led me to two questions. Is the way I and many others see death the wrong way to think of it? And how can I taste death? without actually dying permanently. After traveling the world in the seven seas, I had made a groundbreaking discovery. I found the location of a death simulator. The location? Conveniently, five minutes up the road. So that's where I needed to go. I left a letter for my family in case I never made it back. And now the journey begins. Welcome to the National Gallery of Victoria, or for today's purpose, the home of the death simulator. I was really excited. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I can't wait to die. To be honest, it looked more like a Grey's Anatomy set. I mean, it does look like a place where people would die. Great observation by me right there. And then I was accompanied by Sophie, who was the CEO, or should I say the Chief Execution Officer of this exhibit at the gallery. So Sophie, do you mind explaining what exactly is going to happen during this whole simulation? Absolutely. We're going to hook you up here to the bio bed in a virtual reality headset and a heart rate monitor. Okay. It's going to look at a de-escalation of life and what happens after. Sophie also said most people don't even last the full 10 minutes, which kind of got me panicking. But the most important question of all, who do you think I'm going to see in the afterlife? Michael Jackson? Abraham Lincoln? Or my third grade pet turtle, Ugwe? Put your vote in the comments. As I became familiar with it all, I stared nervously at the heart rate monitor and the VR headset. But I can't back away now. Anything for a YouTube video. I gave one last smile, but in reality, I just felt like this guy. <laughs> Will I actually last the entire 10 minute simulation? Or will I just cry like a baby and demand them to end it? <laughs> I guess we'll find out. So the first phase of the simulation is me in a hospital bed surrounded by surgeons desperately trying to bring me back to life, which fails. This is where the out of body experience starts. Now I'm dead. I can't move. I can't talk. And yeah, that's me floating, <laughs> having the time of my life. The second phase of the simulation is a view of my body leaving the earth out into the cosmos, giving me an out of body experience. After a minute in the simulation, I slowly felt like I was losing all sense of reality as I slowly left the earth. 100 meters, 1000 meters, 10,000 meters, and 1 million meters. I'd officially left the earth. You could say this simulation was out of this world. Yeah, I already have that dad joke mentality and I'm only 23, oh god. Looking back on this footage though, I can say that I was pretty good at being dead. By the three minute mark as my body drifted out into the universe, something started to happen in my mind. A dissociation from reality. It's as if my mind was no longer part of my body. I wasn't sure whether to feel good or bad about this, but then I realized something. All of those school assignments I had due, yep. <laughs> They didn't matter anymore. I no longer live on Earth. There's no way my teachers can chase me up. But then again, Mrs. Smith is actually pretty crazy, so she'd probably find a way somehow. The third phase of the simulation continues to float your body out into the universe. However, at a much faster pace. Five minutes in, if there was any way to explain it, it felt like jelly, or jello for you Americans. That's me 100,000 million meters in the air. Oh wait, uh, there's no air in space, right? Uh, what do they even call it? Like a, a void, a vacuum? Ah, uh, why does it even matter? I'm dead. <gasps> you thought 100,000 million meters was much? <laughs> That's me 10 million million meters away from you all. By the six minute mark, something interesting started happening to my mind. As I stared at myself being pulled further and further away, I felt completely at peace. My mind wasn't cluttered. I just had thoughts and my thoughts only. There was nothing around to distract me, and <laughs> not even Sophie. That's when I started thinking of my grandpa who passed away. But more importantly, my third grade turtle Ugwe. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I miss you, grandpa. As sad as I was to see him leave the earth, I just had an overwhelming sense that he was truly at peace and was no longer suffering. I knew that he was okay. I started crying in the VR headset a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and there's me trying to be discreet wiping away tears. Yeah, that's a little embarrassing. 
The fourth and final phase of the simulation is an inner body experience. Almost as if coming back to reality after the simulation. Eight minutes into the simulation, I felt as if I was being revived as I slowly traveled back into my body. So this is my heart. You're probably wondering what it's doing outside of my body. To be honest, I don't know the answer to that. But as I traveled back into my vessels, cells, and finally, a single atom, I had this sudden realization. You know when you stare at yourself in the mirror and you say, wow, I'm really like in this. Like I'm actually like living, I'm a, a human. It was exactly like that, but a hundred times bigger. It was very refreshing. And then my 10 minutes was up. I had woken up from death. <laughs> Wait, uh, am I a ghost? Wait, uh, no, actually, <laughs> I think I'm good. I can happily say that I lasted the entire simulation. Looks like that letter I wrote to my family was an enormous waste of time. I even used cursive. <laughs> <sighs> Only things I would do. There was only one thing that was on my mind after this, and that was a completely new perspective of death. A lot of us fear death, but based off of that, if that is how it really is, that is one of the most peaceful experiences I think I've ever experienced in my life. Death is nothing to fear. The one question this experience left me with is that what really even is life? We're just a bunch of atoms living in some random part of the universe, being somehow lucky enough to have a human experience, a shot at life. But what is the meaning of this, of life? Personally, I think there's no meaning at all, but that's what makes it so beautiful because you get to create your own meaning unique from anyone else on this planet We've only got one go so make sure you live it to the fullest Who cares if someone doesn't like what you want to do or laughs at you for it because one day We're all going to die and the moment you're on your deathbed You're not going to be thinking about all the people who doubted you but instead all the beautiful memories you made along the way But I'd still rather die than take out the trash.